Hey guys, Grant here from dropshipdownunder.com.au. Today I'm going to tackle a pretty simple topic, but we do get quite a lot of questions about it, and that is just simply how to upload a product to Shopify. So let's dive in. All right, like I said, uh, we get quite a lot of questions about this. It's a fairly simple process and a lot of people that have already got started with Shopify will be well versed on ex exactly how to upload a product. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna jump into a bit of a screen share and show you how to upload a product. I'm gonna show you how to do it manually because this is for beginners and I want you to be able to be able to do it all yourself without having to rely on um, having the CSV file there to upload. I'll show you where to upload the CSV but um, I'm going to focus mainly on uploading the product itself and showing you the, um, the process of doing that and also a few tips along the way. Okay, so we're in the back end of Shopify now. This is just a little project that I'm working on with my daughter, uh, making little polymer clay decorations that she likes to make, so building a store for that just for fun. Uh, basically, I'll show you how to upload a product using this just as a bit of a demo and I'm going to show you how to do it manually, but uh, also show you where to upload that CSV if you want to do it that way as well. So basically what we do to start with is you need to actually first have some collections to add those products to. So I've added some already and I've used two collections here uh, adding, the, adding these products via a tag. So the product condition, the product tag is equal to buns for this one and Parker's Perfect Patisserie for this one. Um, I'm also going to show you how to do it manually as well. So you'll see that under the product conditions, there is no um, condition there for it because we actually have to select that ourselves manually. Okay, so starting off with the product, you just simply go to products, all products, and add product. And what I like to do is I sort of just work down through the fields um, just to ensure that I don't miss anything. But I personally, I actually start with the organization uh, section. And this is because this is what brings up your products into the right places on your store. So I usually start with this. Um, so product type, we're going to start with the buns. Buns, add that. And product type. Uh, what was next? Uh, vendor. So vendor, like is perfect patisserie, add that in. The vendor section. Uh, okay, so collections. This might. This is what tricks people. People think that uh, when they click on this, they haven't seen those other collections that they added. Um, this is because you only see the ones that you select manually in this part here. So you can select staff picks if we want to add it to that. Um, now to add those other tags in that I showed you for those other collections, I've got here under tags. You just select what you put for your tag, add it in, and you can either add buns or you can simply press um, comma and it'll add the tag in for you. Okay, so you add the next one, add that in, and you can press add, and you can see that it does it both ways. So now we've got the tags in there. This will now be added to the buns collection, perfect patisserie, and also in the staff picks, and the rest is all filled in. So now we just go down through the rest of the uh, fields, starting at the top. So this one's a mini bun. Add that in. Next is the description. Okay, I'm going to add in that free delivery stuff at the top. People like that. Okay, okay got that in. I'll come back to the images as I want to show you something else with that. So next will be the pricing. And we did it at $10.95. So this is the price that you'll actually sell the product for. The compare at price uh, is say you are running a discount. This is where you'll put the original price in there. And uh, actual the actual product. The, the tax, sorry, on this product is is either selected in here where you, you will actually add the GST to the product. So if you're adding GST to the, to the product at this price, this is included in the price, you'll leave it blank. But if you want to add GST after they purchase, 
or sorry, after they get to the checkout, you will select this. So this is what will bring up um, the GST, which will add the GST to the product at the checkout. Um, so that you'll select that here. And uh, SKU, this is where you'll get your stock keeping unit number from your uh, supplier. They generally have this, so I'll just add in something random. Uh, barcode, like I said before, you'll get this from the um, supplier. You can leave this blank, it's not, a, not essential. Uh, okay, so this is where you can either track the inventory amount, so I could add in two if there's two left, or you can just say don't track inventory. And so if you've got an endless supply, you know your supply is not going to run out, they've got loads and loads, you can just press don't track because it's not that important. Uh, you can select allow them to purchase when it's out of stock. So if you know that you've got products coming in, um, your supplier's got a shipment, they're out of stock, but you've got some coming in, um, you can allow them to uh, add the product here. But generally I'd, I'd, I would probably... I would probably not allow them to, to buy the product unless you're absolutely certain that that product's coming because it can lead to issues down the track. Okay, so shipping, this is where you'll work out um, how much you're going to charge for your shipping um, based on its weight. So uh, I won't go too far into shipping because that's a whole other thing, but obviously it's a physical product, I'm going to be shipping it, so I'll leave that ticked and I'll select the weight here based on my shipping rates that I've already calculated. So if I'm calculating my my shipping via weight and I say I want my standard shipping for these buns to be $10 Australia wide um, and I'll set that, that shipping rate to say one kilo and then everything that I want to charge uh, $10 for shipping, I'll just add the weight as one kilo and it'll instantly add in my shipping as $10 for each item that I've added as one kilo. Pretty simple fulfillment service, you can leave that Shopify um, and variants, we'll go further into that once I save the product. Editing the website SEO, you can go into this and uh, edit this if you like, this basically just brings in the description from above. Um, but personally I like to go in and edit this a little bit to include a few more keywords. You obviously want to keep it so it reads well, but you, you don't want to make it um, just a long string of, of um, keywords or tags. You want it to read, be able to, people to be able to read it properly as well. So, yeah, that's the SEO. We'll come back up to the images. So I wanted to show you a few things with this. So I'll just slide this across, and you can see I've got a few images here. Now, this is a really highly high quality image that I've, I've taken from my uh, camera. So I'll show you this this one first. And you can see that obviously this is way too big. So it's it's exceeding the 20 megapixel limit. So we won't let us do it. So how do we get around that? Well, very simple. You go to a site called compressedjpeg.com um, and you can just simply drop your photo in here and it will reduce the size of the file uh, for you and you can simply download it. And you can see that I've, I've downloaded it and it's reduced the file size by 81%. So, um, to, to actually change the file type, it's fairly simple. You just tab over here and you can go to PNG or PDF. So either way, whatever your file type, you should be able to get around it that way. Okay, back to the products and I'll upload the one that I've already changed. So there's the image there. See, it's uploading that fairly well. And as I'm going along, I actually like to uh, do the alt text on each, all of these images as well. So um, it helps with your SEO, but also it says here for visually impaired. But also it helps with Google to read what the product is, because if it's going to list that product in a search, um, it can't tell what it is unless you've listed this here in the alt text. So it's done. Okay, so this is basically a standard product without variants right now. So we've added all this in, um, and we can simply just press save. Okay, so I'll view that and I'll give you an idea of how it looks. I've done nothing to the site whatsoever, so you'll see it as a fairly bare looking site. But you can see now that um, uh, the image is in there, I've got the heading, got the price, and they've got a strike through because I've actually added in the compare at price, and you can see that it's saying it's sale. So different, different uh, themes will do this in a different way, but this is how this theme does it, just the default uh, Shopify theme. 
Okay, so we've got all the product description down there and you can add to cart because I haven't got any other payment options at the moment. So if I click on that, um, it just brings up this order um, summary. So that's just a fairly standard looking uh, product. So X out of that and I'll show you how to turn this into some variants as well. Okay, so come down the bottom, we want to add variants and I'll do um, maybe type a few different types of buns. Okay, so what are they? We have a strawberry shortcake. So we add that in. And to add the option values here, these these um, for the variants, you just same as what we did with the tags up here next to um, for the collection. So you'll just either type it in or actually paste that in and just press a comma and it will make a tag just like that. Okay, next one. Lavender bun, add that in, comma. Maybe the marble one. Add that in, comma. Okay. And you can see that now it's bringing in all these uh, different uh, variants underneath with the, with the fire system, fuses, barcodes, etc. Et so you're, you're going to need to go through and change these. Um, personally, I press save because it gives us more options to go in and change after we press save button. Save, and you'll see how it changes. Okay, so now you can see there's an edit button here next to all of these. Um, and this is automatically brought in the one we've done already. And, and it's changed the variants, uh, sorry, the SKU numbers as well to add in um, so they're all different. So obviously if this is not the SKU number, you need to go in and change it. I'll leave that for now. But obviously add in the right SKU for each of the variants that you have. And obviously the uh, amounts for each of these will change as well. So you need to add those in. Uh, I'll just save that for now, but I'm going to go and show you how to edit this. All right, so by default, this is the image that's going to show up. So we want each of these variants to have their own image. So I'm going to go in and press edit. Okay, this is the strawberry shortcake one. So I'm going to go find that one. It was strawberry shortcake and just drop that in here. Okay, so now if this was this product was while well, this is loading, if this was a different product, uh, sorry, if this price was a different, blah, 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 if this product was a different price, you would just change that in here, and it would have it just for this product. And obviously, you can still come down and change all of these different settings that you saw before on the first page for each individual variant. So I press save. Okay, and you'll see now that that one comes up there. And you have to actually press save before you go to the next variant, otherwise you'll lose the progress that you've had. Okay, so this is the lavender. Grab the lavender bun. Okay, so I'm going to leave all these prices the same just for um, time's sake. Save that. Click on the other product of the window. Okay, marble. And that's the original one we uploaded, I believe. Yep, that's one. Okay, wait for that to save. Okay, save that. All right, now to get back to the product, we just go back to the mini bun at the top there. And you can see we now have the, all of those images in there as well. And you can see I've got other images with other backgrounds. So if I wanted to keep um, the, the black theme there, uh, I would actually just use the right images, obviously with the right backgrounds, and I can drop them in. And um, I've actually added the wrong one here, but regardless, we'll keep we'll keep moving forward. Okay, so to view that, come back out here again and press view. And now you'll see that's changed slightly. So I now have um, all three images in the uh, in the description next to the description here and obviously the type because I've added this in as a variant I can now or the customer can now select them as the um, each individual item and you can see that the image beside it changes as well so that's how you add a product and the variants using it manually all right so to go out and do it uh, with a CSV you'll simply go import and you'll just, I don't have the CSV file ready, but when you get a CSV file from your supplier, this is how you do it. 
simply choose file and upload file and it will start bringing in those products for you. Okay, so that's the basic rundown of how you add a product. Uh, very simple to do. If you've got any questions, shoot us an email, happy to help. Um, but uh, that's it for today and thanks for watching the video. If you've got any value out of the video, please give us a thumbs up to the video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our videos and as always you can head over to dropshipdownunder.com.au to check out our specific course on how to build a dropshipping store right here in Australia. Alright, that's it for today. Cheers guys.